Good afternoon, beginning farmer friends. As you can see, we still have the calf inside. The calf is doing great, drinking a ton of milk, just doing everything that we would want it to do. We have the calf inside because, well, the other thing is it's three degrees outside, but it's been below zero overnight and most of the day. And this battery in my son's truck, well, it just went bye-bye. The reason that we have the calf inside though is because if you watched the previous video, I talked about its mom, it's the cow being down. We tried everything that we could. She was an 11 year old cow and I don't know what happened to be completely honest. We asked the vet, the vet gave us some medicine, some things to try with the cow. We did all that we could. We tried getting the cow up as best we could. And when it was all said and done, the cow did not make it. So that is a tough blow. And I'll be honest, it's, um, it did kind of knock my uh, desire, that along with the cold, to make some videos, but it is one of the realities of farming, and we did everything that we could. I don't know that we could have changed anything. We actually had another calf. I'll go out and show you the little bull calf that we actually had as well, and that cow and calf were born the next day of this calf that we have inside, and it's doing amazing right now, and... Uh, the cold has is having no effect on it. We do have a place where they can get in, get in and out of the wind, and um, but yeah, I don't I don't know what happened. The vet uh, said possibly milk fever, but um, she didn't have a a great answer. So that's the part of the story that I didn't want to have to tell. I wanted to be able to tell the story of the cow getting better. It didn't happen uh, this time. Let's see if that fancy new Napa battery fixes the truck though, because my diesel truck, it does not like this cold at all. So it would be nice to have a reliable gas truck. Not a problem. I'm gonna let that truck run for a minute, let the blood get flowing in it here, but I do wanna show you that new baby bull calf that we had. The calf in the house, like I said, is a heifer calf, but over here, number 19, I think it is, she had a nice little bull calf and it's doing pretty well too. cute little guy for sure and it's kind of funny every time I've been out here it seems like recently we have mama cow right over here but the bull has also been hanging around this baby calf a lot too so I don't know what's up with that but that calf is doing great the cold does not seem to be affecting at all I like I said have a spot up here in the shed for the animals to go in if they'd like and well you can see where they all are out here they're out here right now the sheep are all hanging down in that uh, kind of junkier bales that I put out for them. So we are surviving, I don't know if we're thriving, but we are surviving the cold snap. And it is only going to get colder. There are some negative 15 degrees scheduled for this coming week. So the thing you probably want to know about is the chicks though. How are they doing? I don't know if you can tell, but we've got a tiger guarding the door right now. I told my wife that's to scare the chicks underneath the brooders so they stay warm. <sighs> Actually, this was my wife's idea, was to put a blanket up here to keep the drafts from coming in around the door. Not just when we're opening and closing it, but all the time because there's some areas where the drafts can pick through. The chicks look like they're doing very well though. They need feed and water. They've been eating a lot of feed and water. That's a good thing. As you can see, they are hungry, mungry little chicks right now. And it's basically fill the feeders three times a day kind of job because I don't have a lot of floor space to put feeders. I want those feeders to be close to the brooders or even under the brooders so that they can stay by the heat lamp. Having chicks that want to eat though is not a problem. I'm happy to have them eating because that means they'll be growing. That means they'll be ready when I want to put them out onto pasture. It's hard to think about pasture right now, but it will be coming sometime in this spring. And it means that we'll have chicks ready for the beginning of farmer's market season, which is the whole goal with these all along. It is a little more difficult with the water than the feed though. This long, tall brooder that I have over here that's kind of a makeshift brooder, it's not as good as the one that is designed as a brooder. I think it's just because it's taller. The other one has the lights on the sides, 
they're beaming in from either side it's got a short roof and so the heat just kind of stays where it is on this one it's quite a bit taller than it i do have four heat lamps in there and it is pretty warm and the chicks are spread out but it's a little more difficult to keep warm i would say than my smaller brooder the plus side to this one though is i can easily get in to put waters and feed in there and that water in there it doesn't really freeze the other ones, they get a little frozen. I am afraid to bring out the big three gallon waters though because I think that they would definitely freeze. There is one other kind of issue that I think that we have going on in here that I'm not 100% how to solve. There's really not a great way. We'll just kind of have to do the best we can with it. Probably the only real difficulty that I think we're gonna have at this point is the bedding. Out here where the chicks aren't spending a lot of time, it's pretty good. Underneath these brooders, especially this one, which is where most of the chicks are, and even this one too, that bedding's going to get really dirty really fast. It's actually supposed to be 10 degrees on Wednesday, so I think Wednesday is the day. 10 degrees sounds warm right now. Well, I'm going to come out, lift this up, stir up that bedding really quick, put it back down, and I think the chicks will be no worse for the wear. Honestly, this whole system here with this Hoover and this Hoover and three inches of bedding or four inches of bedding on the bottom and insulation and the blanket and seven heat lamps, it is all working better than I expected it to. It's not ideal. I would like to come up with a more permanent system than this, but I think we can make it through this week. And when we can make it through this week, then it really just kind of seems downhill from there. It's going to be March before we know it and then April, and then May, ah, spring is not far away. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it though. This bucket of water that I took in to fill up the waters, it's got a skim of ice on it already and it was sitting out in the open. It is warm enough where the lamps are. As soon as you get away from those lamps, it is freezing cold in there, literally freezing cold. Oh, cold temperatures, how I loathe you. I'm out here with the 4430, in the cattle winter lot where the sheep and the cattle are <sighs> stinking tractor won't run i think that there's i don't know water in the fuel crud in the fuel lines again we cleaned the fuel tank out when we replaced the hydraulic pump but something is not working right it's kind of frustrating doing things with your fingers while the temperature is dropping below zero is not fun. That catcher bowl, sediment bowl, whatever that thing is called, was definitely full of frozen fuel. I had been putting diesel treatment in this because my friend had some problems with the fuel where I got fuel from. Let's see if we can get the tractor at least up to the shed. Of course, the major problem is if there was ice there, there's ice everywhere. It's in the filters, it's in the fuel lines. Are we having fun yet? I am trying everything that I can. I tried pumping the fuel pump here. It's coming all the way through the fuel system to the filters. It is, it's basically just gelled up, I think. I honestly, I have never had a diesel tractor gel up. This is my first experience with it. Kind of wish it would have happened in the barn and not out here in the winter lot because I'm not 100% sure what I do next. I think that's it. I think the battery is dead. that it's running great right now or idling great right now but somehow after talking on the phone to my cousin it started up i was starting to get ready to round up a bunch of extension cords and run them all the way down the hill there i think what i am going to do though is i'm going to go to town i'm going to get a different fuel treatment to put in and i'm going to get two fuel filters swap the fuel filters out on it because i can tell that they are gelled up i tell you what sometimes i feel like the world's most pretendious farmer 
After that fiasco, I thought I'd come check on the chicks. Make sure they still had plenty of feed and water before I took off to town for the night. They're doing great. I do notice though when I walked in here that my camera fogged up a little bit and that there is frost and ice on the wall. So I guess we are building a little compost in here, building a little heating in here. I'm feeling much better about the chickens now than I was earlier. What do you guys think? Are we, are we gonna make it? Stop here at a local John Deere Van Wall dealer. Got two fuel filters. This is actually the dealership where my son works. What a day that was. I only farmed like three hours today and it seems like things went downhill fast. Thank you so much for watching. It's a Monday, so I'm gonna go to robotics tonight. Man, if you like the robotics stuff, put a comment down below or I'll try to put a link. That's what I'll do. If you like the robotics stuff, I'll put a link to the robot in the comments or no in the description. That's the word I was looking for. There's our robot. That's Tacobotics right there.